Hi everyone and welcome back to Think Science. This video is part 2 of the photosynthesis process. Today, we're focusing on the light independent reactions that happen in photosynthesis after the light dependent reactions have taken place. For a refresher on part 1 and the dependent reactions, make sure to check out our last video. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon for notifications about future videos. So, before we get started, let's ask our question of the day. What does ATP stand for in biology? Leave your answers in the comments below. So like I said, we have the light independent reactions as the second part of photosynthesis. This stage is also called the Calvin cycle because a process called the Calvin cycle happens during this stage. When we're starting off into this stage, we already have the two products produced from the light dependent reactions, ATP and NADPH. In the Calvin cycle, we are going to take these two compounds and add carbon dioxide to form new products, including glucose, the main and final product of photosynthesis. Remember our photosynthesis equation? We already produced our oxygen byproduct in the light dependent reactions, the first step of photosynthesis. So now we're in the middle of this equation and we're focusing on glucose. This Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma, which is the inner space of the chloroplast organelle. Though we already have ATP and NADPH from the first step of photosynthesis inside the stroma, how did we get carbon dioxide into the stroma too? Well, plants take in carbon dioxide through little pores on their leaves called stomata, and then these carbon dioxide molecules enter the stroma through diffusion. So now that we have carbon dioxide, ATP, and NADPH, we can begin our Calvin cycle. We start off with one molecule of carbon dioxide to begin carbon fixation, a sub-step in the Calvin cycle. Here, the carbon dioxide molecule encounters a ribulose 1-5 bisphosphate molecule, abbreviated RUBP. RUBP has five carbon molecules in its structure. So with the help of a Rubisco enzyme, the carbon dioxide molecule and the RUBP combine to form a six carbon molecule. This molecule quickly splits into two molecules of 3PGA because the long molecule isn't stable enough to exist for a long period of time. One 3PGA molecule thus has three carbons in its structure. After we have finished our carbon fixation, we use our ATP and NADPH. We use these two things to convert each 3PGA molecule into a molecule of G3P, which is a type of 3-carbon sugar. First, the 3PGA molecule gains a phosphate group from ATP, which in turn makes the ATP now become ADP. Then, NADPH gives away two of its electrons to the molecule while taking away its phosphate group. This step produces a 3-carbon G3P sugar and as a byproduct, NADP plus and an extra phosphate group. Now that we have our G3P, some of the G3P will be used to generate RUBP to keep the Calvin cycle running. The rest of the G3P will exit the cycle to form glucose, the end product of photosynthesis. However, in order for one G3P molecule to exit the cycle and go towards glucose, five must go towards generating more RUBP at the same time. Thus, three Calvin cycle processes must happen in order for one G3P molecule to exit. Three cycles mean three molecules of carbon dioxide are needed, and three cycles produce a total of six G3P molecules, one of which is used for glucose. However, in order to actually make one six carbon glucose molecule, two G3P molecules must join together, so two must exit the Calvin cycle. Thus, when two G3P exit the Calvin cycle, they make one glucose for every six Calvin cycles. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more science videos. If this video made sense, leave a comment to let us know. Be sure to also leave any questions and we will do our best to answer. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos on cellular respiration. And thank you for watching Think Science.